All right, since I just gave you a really um, simple application video, I wanted to make sure that we had the same application for using the table with a more mathy problem, with maybe some work ahead of it. So if I asked you to create a table for this, most of our methods for creating a table are not going to go very well. Um, one method we have for creating an easy table is to go ahead and use the intercepts. So to use x is 0, y is 0. Um, not going to be terrible for y is 0. Then we get 2x is equal to 8, so x must be 4. But kind of gross when we make this 0 because we end up with 8 over 3. We end up with a fraction. Um, so it could be an issue. And if we start trying to pick numbers, we may end up dealing with some problems in terms of picking numbers that don't work out nice and evenly for us. Um, if you were picking numbers for a different class, you would just want to make sure that the easier one to divide out here is the 2 on the x. So I would pick numbers for the y. That's going to be the easier one to deal with. And I just need to pick numbers that if I plugged in like y is equal to 1, this is going to be 3. And when I subtract it, this is going to be odd, which is no bueno. So I'd want to plug in something like y is equal to 2. And then I have 2x plus 3 times 2 is equal to 8. 2x plus 6 is equal to 8. Um, 2x is equal to 2. And x is equal to 1. So I could actually find myself an ordered pair here if I had to do this by hand. But like we said in class, there's no reason to do these things by hand. Um, Doing it by hand to me is actually really good for some things. It gives you a lot of number sense because, like I said, if you plug in one, it's not going to work, and you start figuring out what numbers will work and thinking about what's divisible by two. But if you don't have a lot of that number sense to begin with, it can be very challenging to figure out what makes sense to plug in. So I'm going to bring this back. We're going to do it again. 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. Let's say I wanted to utilize the table in my calculator because I know it's awesome and will give me a bunch of values. In order to use the table function in my calculator, I need this thing to be solved out for y, which means we need to solve this literal, literal equation before we can even get started. So first thing that I would do is isolate that variable term by subtracting the 2x, moving the opposite of my order of operations to undo stuff. So now we have 3y is equal to 8 minus 2x. You could put that in the other order if you want it to look more like slope intercept, negative 2x plus 8, but I'm going with this. And then we'll divide out that coefficient of 3. I know my camera keeps refocusing whenever my hand gets in the way. Sorry, guys. Uh, to find y is equal to 8 minus 2x divided by 3. No reason to go any further to try to break this up or simplify it at all. Every simplification step that I make is just a potential place for an error to happen. So I want to stop as soon as possible when I'm going to type these things into the calculator. So this is what I want to type into the calculator. I'm going to go back to my table, edit my function. I want to put in a new function, so I'm going to press clear. Use that fraction button. You can even type this in so it looks exactly like what I have on my page. 8 minus 2x over 3. Once I confirm that it looks exactly the same, I can press enter. I can say let's start at 0. I happen to know plugging in 0 is going to give me an ugly fraction, but I can try it. Step by 1, and let's calculate. And then we can see. Set up our table. X, Y. Sure enough, we have 1, 2, which was the last point I just found when I did this by hand. I can move forward. I've got 4, 0. That was the intercept I found when I was doing it by hand. And then I have 7, negative 2. So every 3, it looks like I'm getting a new whole number value, which makes sense because you can see we divide it out by a 3. That's going to be the, the bottom of my slope, which is about what my change in x is. And over here, it looks as if we are subtracting 2 each time. I always like to, to point out my patterns. So there we go. We got the table in there. If we wanted to check that our solution here was right, we would just take any one of these values here, plug it back into the original. 2 times 7, so I'm using this, by the way. Uh, 2 times 7 plus 3 times a negative 2 is equal to 8. 14 minus 6 is equal to 8, which is true. 
So now I feel pretty good that the solution to this was the same as the solution to that. So I don't think I screwed anything up. This looks like it's the right thing and I can go ahead and start doing my graph.